Welcome back everybody to another in my model build time lapse series and uh, today's video we're going to be looking at my uh, building of the 148 scale Edward L29. Now I kind of had always always planned to build this for somebody else but it wasn't really a commission build. Uh, I'm doing it kind of on my own and uh, to be honest the, uh, I'm actually delivering the model to the person today. The, the, as I'm filming this I'm going this afternoon to go give the model to him and he has no idea he's getting it. Uh, it's a complete uh, an utter su surprise for him. Um, so that being said I have been a little coy on the last bit of this um, build. If you've been following along on my monthly uh, updates you probably have seen uh, very little of this recently because I am trying to keep it a little bit under wraps just in case he happens to see it. I don't think he will but you never know. So that being said, it was a relatively easy build. Uh, Edward, as always, it's actually an AMK kit that Edward reboxed um, with some extra details and kits. And I got the weekend edition, so it was a pretty basic one. Um, didn't include any photo etch or anything. It was just strictly that with some decals. Made my own decals. You'll see uh, some of that near the end um, to make it up in the scheme that I needed to make. But at the end of the day, it was basically out of the box. There was no modification, no extra work. Uh, to be honest, most of the decals I needed came in the kit. Uh, there was just some little ones I had to do up to make it uh, specific to the aircraft I wanted to do. But anyways, it turned out really good. Very happy with it. Uh, stick around to the end. Uh, you'll get to see the uh, finished product, um, a little bit of a video review and some pictures of it. So take a look at that. If you want to jump to the end, by all means, jump to the end. Um, it is what it is. And uh, we will uh, meet you on the other side. So enjoy the video. Uh, as always, if you like what you're seeing, please uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave some comments, uh, you know, what you like, what you want me to do different, all that kind of stuff. Let me know what you think, and we'll get on to this video. And as always, my name is Sean, and this is Sean's Aviation. As usual with a uh, aircraft model I got started off with the cockpit um, pretty standard also when I do my jets I tend to leave the ejection seats out and put them in uh, much later in the build it just makes masking off the canopies much easier uh, later on so um, we got to start on that and you'll see a lot of the instrument panels and side consoles on this are decals versus uh, standard kind of um, molded detail that I paint so it uh, ends up looking really detailed at the end you just lose some of that three-dimensional uh, detail that you're used to seeing.
I have to apologize, guys. I just spent the past five minutes uh, gluing together parts of this L29 and realized I never had the camera uh, going. So just as a quick catch-up um, for what I just spent all that time doing off-camera. Uh, cockpit is assembled. Um, so the... Uh, basically, I just glued the instrument panels, um, the forward combing, and the... Um, Control sticks have been glued in. Everything else was already assembled prior to painting. So I glued all that together. The fuselage is just pressed together to help align everything, but I glued in the nose compartment um, in place and I glued in this rear decking in place. I still have to install the blue oxygen tanks. I'm assuming they're oxygen tanks in place in here. Um, I'm gonna, the, the fuselage isn't glued yet, so I'm gonna still do that at some point. I gotta paint them blue and then get everything installed. So this can still pry apart. Um, as I said, I was just holding it together as a way to align the bits and pieces. So as I said, the rear decking is installed. Um, the forward nose panel area where the nose gear fits in the well on this little sort of accessories bay at the front, as well as the exhaust um, at the back. So I'll be able to put some masking tape into here and clean that up before I do any painting. Um, so anyways, it's all more or less um, together and uh, yeah so uh, my next step will be painting these blue bits getting that put together and then getting everything put together so as you can see here just as a wonderful visual reference I'm just gonna drop this down into here if I can get everything lined up properly Something like, something like that. Something like that. So you can start to see how that's all gonna look when it's all, uh, whoops. This is the problem with doing something like this is it's still in the process of being assembled. But anyways, it doesn't quite fit, there we go. Uh, nothing I want to fit properly. Anyways, you guys get the point. It's going to look good. There. But yeah, once it's all assembled and glued and popped together, that's going to look really nice with the cockpit open, which is the look I'm going for. So very happy with all of that. Um, yeah, so we're moving right along. I'm going to jump back into the... Uh, standard time lapse for the rest of this and we'll get this all assembled.
carry just a little bit of putty. It's actually the only putty I needed to use in the entire airframe was just along the spine. I'm not entirely sure why it didn't seal quite well, but it was just a small, tiny little seam. Just a little bit of uh, putty was able to fill it up. And other than that, this kit went together extremely well. Uh, just a little bit of sanding on some of the scenes and cleaning up some of the uh, fingerprints I managed to put in with my gluey fingers. And other than that, great kit, very little filler needed, very impressed. I start the process for the masking uh, you see I get the uh, clear canopy on the front masked off and then the other two canopies the forward and the rear canopy parts I just used white glue to temporarily hold them in place um, while I do the painting and then you'll see at the end where I kind of pop those off clean up the edges and then glue those in the open position much easier to do that than it is to try to finish everything off and mask around it and whatnot so I find personally that's the easiest way to do it and uh, it's worked for me so far
and it is interesting in this aircraft as the wheel wells and the landing gear are painted the same color as the outside airframe itself i was able to actually install all of these and paint them all at the same time uh, very rare in an aircraft that that happens usually the wheel wells and landing gear are painted especially in a military aircraft a different color than the exterior of the airframe uh, for various reasons um, so uh, this made it a little bit easier to build uh, i didn't have to do quite as much masking as normal to get it done and uh, made sure the landing gear was installed more or less in, this, in, in the proper order on the instructions. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, I, you'll see I don't glue the gear doors on right now. I do that later just to make sure I don't break things off. But the gear, the main gear at minimum, as you'll see, we're glued into the wings um, at, at this stage. You can see I've got the main airframe. I got a coat of primer on it just to make sure everything looked good. Um, and then uh, here I'm getting as well all the uh, little bits and pieces, the landing gear doors, the flaps, the drop tanks, all the little bits that need to be painted the same color as the exterior of the aircraft. I'm prepping now to start doing that exterior uh, final paint color. And again, like I mentioned, super easy being all one color, uh, not a lot of masking required. Um, just some little details later on you'll see, but the main aircraft was just one solid color. Very, very simple and easy to paint. Now I did manage that there was a couple of small details that I had to go ahead and mask for. This is them right here. Um, you'll see in the instructions there, the wing tips, the horizontal stabs, and the tip of the nose gets painted red. Uh, so I had to go along and, and mask for that. Uh, and then I did a white base coat and then the red on top. 
and again turned out very well a little bit of overspray that i was able to clean up or paint over uh but overall that went uh, very smooth putting that red tips on and at the end looked very good usually with red i would do them first uh, but because it was such a small area um, i decided to try it at the end and it actually turned out pretty good if it was a much larger area i would have painted first um, but uh, you kind of have to gut feel as you go through some of these things So here we are at a good uh, midpoint of the build. I'm uh, just about ready to start the decals. Uh, you'll see the aircraft has been painted. Uh, it has been gloss coated. I used the uh, Model Master uh, flat gold gray, which is the closest match I could find for the color. And I used the uh, Vallejo red to do the red tips and everything. And it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. I'm hoping that the, it actually turns out that the gentleman I'm building this for, if I haven't mentioned it, he doesn't know I'm building this. Um, and uh, I actually have, uh, there's a little thing, the museum that this aircraft belongs to that he flies is having a little get together in Mar uh, May, middle of May. So I'm going to try to basically get it done and surprise him with the, uh, the model. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, because it's a custom model, I, ha I did have to do some custom decals. Um, the, the scheme is very similar to this scheme, but it uses the check roundels. So it does come with the check roundels in the kit that I can use on the, uh, the model, and then this is the main scheme, and the aircraft that I'm building is actually 1927, and this is 1928. So I came up with some custom decals, and it includes um, the silver registration, uh, the, it's a little fuzzy, I'm a little annoyed at how bad it turned out, to be honest, but uh, it's, you know, on the jet from a distance, you're not gonna notice it. And then the seven, will replace the eight with a seven, and then I might just have to touch it up with a bit of paint, uh, just to make it look good, but custom decals, we'll see how well those go, and we'll uh, get going on this right now, so stay tuned, we'll get to see this thing finished.
was actually probably one of the hardest parts of this kit was trying to get this nose wheel in place. It uh, didn't want to quite fit through the hole that it was supposed to go through and I kept breaking off the upper um, part, the upper um, sort of shock that goes up through the forward floor up into the upper bulkhead. Uh, so you kind of see it go through from the, in the nose gear well up through the floor up into that upper sort of uh, nose avionics area. And I kept breaking off. I ended up just kind of super gluing it together. And at the end, it ended up holding, but it took me quite a bit um, to, to finagling to get that in there. And I was very worried that it would be a weak point in the kit. And luckily, it uh, turned out at the end to be okay. <laughs>
Okay, let's do a quick update before I get much farther on this. Um, as I'm sure you can see, the plane is basically done. It's got the semi-gloss on it that I wanted. It's basically ready. I've done whatever weathering I planned. This is more or less a finished model. The only thing I really have left to do on this uh, is pull off the canopies, pull off the masking, insert the seats, uh, you know, glue the canopy open, that kind of stuff, and uh, paint the torpedo tubes and a couple of the little tiny antennas, either black or steel, depending on what needs to be done. But the focus on it right now is going to be mounting it to the base. Now, if you've kind of seen what I've been doing here with the calipers and the measuring, is I marked where one wheel wants to be, and then I got the width of the wheels, and I put down a second mark where the other main is, and then by able to triangulate between the mains and the nose, I was able to draw the arcs and get the three marks. Now, what you can see here, I just made them red just for easy to see. I'm going to stain this next. Now, I didn't want to lose the holes once I stained, um, but because of the way it's going to be mounted, you're not going to see you're not going to see the red dots underneath the wheels. So I assumed it would be fine to mark them red. It's going to disappear once that happens. Now, I've also gone ahead and drilled some holes in the wheels. They're not very deep. They're just uh, deep enough to glue the pin. And this is just a standard straight push pin that I have cut down. It's going to be glued into the hole in the wheels. And then that would fit into the holes that I've drilled in the boards where the red marks are. Uh, so the pin, plane will be pinned and I can glue the pins into the mains and glue the pins onto the board and then the plane itself won't be snapped off or moved around. It'll have a little bit of strength because everything will be pinned and super glued together. So as I said right now, my next step, I'm going to give this, I, I have given this a quick sanding. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a coat of uh, stain on this and then a shot of clear. Um, and then I have the sticker, uh, as I said, I am donating this to uh, the pilot who flies it. Uh, and it is owned by local museum, the Acer Cold War Museum, uh, or Acer Warbirds of Canada. So I'm going to be mounting the sticker onto this. So stain it, layer of clear, put the sticker in place, um, and then clear two shots of clear on top of that to seal that sticker in place. And then this will be pinned. I can glue this to the base with the pins. And once that's done, I'll go through and start doing the final little installation of all the little bits that I still have to do. So that's kind of what my plan is. So on that note, we will uh, get to the staining and get the final bits off. The next time you hear me talking in this video, it will be going over the final product. So enough talk. Let's jump right back into this and let's get the staining completed.
was about this time I realized I forgot to put the nose wheel door, the forward nose wheel door in place. Um, I tried gluing it in. I couldn't get it to fit properly um, after having the aircraft glued down to the base. At the end of the day, nobody's going to notice that the nose gear door is missing. Um, so I just left it off and I went ahead and finished it without it. That was really the only hiccup on this entire kit. Uh, otherwise, it went together very well and I'm very, very happy with the final product. Here we are with the finished product. Uh, overall, very happy with how this turned out. There's a few minor issues with it. Uh, little things I would do a little bit differently if I went back and did it again. Um, notably, the decals, the custom decals didn't quite turn out as well as I would have liked. They're a little pixelated. I need to kind of play with the, the uh, program I use and the file format versus the printer I use. Make sure everything is playing along nicely to get that quality I need. Didn't have a lot of free time to play with it. With this one, going forward, I will kind of make sure everything does balance. Other than that, um, it, it's very stable. The way I pinned it, it's very stable and it's, and it's uh, gluing to the base. It's not going to easily get knocked off. My only real issue is I drilled, when I drilled the holes, one was hole was just a little narrower than it needed to be. And you'll see that that one, let's see if I can get this, this one wheel over here. It's just angled a little off. Uh, the wheel kicked over when I tried to fit the pin in. Fit the pin in. So other than that, um, it, it turned out really well. Those are the only real issues. Not something you really have to be looking for to kind of notice it. Um, otherwise, most people probably aren't really going to see it. Um, looking at it, it's not going to be noticeable unless you're looking straight on. But the way it's designed, you're not going to be. So other than that, uh, very very happy with it. The base is nice. Came out very good. Gloss coat looks good. The sticker is actually underneath a single layer of gloss. Uh, to make sure it doesn't start peeling. Plane itself is great, a nice semi-gloss, uh, not flat, just a little shiny the way it would be in, uh, in real life. Um, it looks great, uh, all the little details pop on it, um, looks good just sitting there on that base. Um, again, very happy with it. I'll zoom in here just quite quickly to show you the cockpit. Uh, cockpit's turned out nice, those decal uh, seat belts or straps look really nice. Um, the cockpit itself, the instrument panels, everything turned out very nice. Let's get the light over here a little bit better so you can see. But yeah, see it turned out quite nicely in there. All those little details really pop the way they need to. Um, so overall, very happy with it. Uh, I'm just going to throw up a couple of quick pictures to show you kind of what that final product looks like from the different angles and whatnot. And we're going to call it a wrap. So I'm going to be heading out. It's actually... Uh, this weekend, it's the middle-ish of May, uh, right now and I'm filming this, this coming weekend is when I'm supposed to surprise uh, the person with this model, so looking forward to that, hopefully he likes it. Um, and yeah, don't have much else to say other than uh, thank you guys for watching this time lapse. Keep an eye out for more, uh, there's always going to be a bunch more of these coming out as I finish off the models, and I appreciate you guys watching it. Uh, again, down below, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Good, bad, ugly, whatever you want. Let me know what you think, what you want, and where you would like me to go. And on that note, we're going to wrap it up. We'll see you all next time. Thanks again for watching. Thank you for watching guys and as always if you are interested in any of the content you see you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site and if you're interested in any of this content uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, youtube to follow more thank you very much and see you guys next time